Hey guys, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why Zambia lost to Guinea-Bissau. Now, I literally just sat down and broke it down into three main reasons I think Zambia lost to Guinea-Bissau. The first and the biggest, most major reason is simply because Sven didn't read the game. Sven honestly didn't read the game. If you look at the second half, the first half was kind of average from Zambia. Guinea-Bissau also hadn't really kicked into gear, so it wasn't a bad thing for Zambia. In the second half, Guinea-Bissau went all out on the wings. All they did was bombard the wings. All they did was overlap. All they did was just try their best to get the ball out wide and then cross it central. How did they score their first goal? They didn't. It was an own goal, cross into the box. Sunzu tries to stop it, puts his leg there. It, he, he hits the ball and turns it into the back of his own net. Kennedy Mwene had dived five years before that cross came in. So basically we stood no chance, you know. It, second goal as well. It came from a foul on the wing, free kick into the box and then they scored the header. We couldn't challenge them. Man for man, they're taller than everyone. Zambia's tallest player is Topila Sunzu at 1'9", 6'3". Second tallest is Emmanuel Mwepu at 1'83", or 1'84", which is 6' flat. And then everyone else is basically just 5 and below, 5'11 and below. 5'11 is pretty tall, 5'10 five foot, five foot is also kind of tall, but it's different when you look at the Guinea-Bissau side who had everyone extremely tall. First reason, Sven didn't read the game. Second reason, Shonga missed two great chances. First chance he missed was on the left wing, Augustin Mulenga did very well. Came up, like he came into the box with the ball. He, Shonga actually had a one-two with Augustin Mulenga. He got the chance to shoot and he just skewed it wide, very wide. He shot with his left foot when he could have done it with his right as well. And because it, hap it happened so fast, it's unfair to blame him for that one. The second chance he missed, he had more time on the ball. He was one on one with the goalkeeper and he didn't even reach. He didn't even test the keeper, didn't even hit it on target. Like he literally just brought his form from Orlando Pirates onto the national team. And that's why, that's why, that's why we lost, basically. Two great chances were missed. Pat Sandaka also had an opportunity earlier to play in Shonga. He chose to shoot, missed terribly as well, but can you blame him? He was on the bench, he just came on and so he was trying to find a goal, but I feel as though those are decisions that as he matures, he's going to have more control over and he's going to know what, when to do what to do. The third reason, and for me, this is the biggest because I know this player very well. The third reason is because Mwepu wasn't on his A game. That's it. Mwepu just wasn't him, his usual self. He had a chance early on that he missed or rather the keeper saved, but twice against the same keeper, he's failed to find the back of the net. In Lusaka, he missed a very good opportunity and in Guinea-Bissau, he missed another good opportunity, or rather the goalkeeper saved on both occasions. I feel as though Mwepu could have at least scored on the second occasion, considering he missed on the first one. He should have learned how the keeper works, how the keeper functions, but that didn't happen. And he just shot, keeper saved. That's how we found ourselves not scoring the first goal in the very early minutes when Guinea-Bissau were very disorganized. Had we gone into halftime leading 2-0, it would have been a very different story, but that wasn't the case. And overall, his game for me was probably a 4. And I've never given him such a low rating. I've watched him play for Salzburg, for Leifering. He's always a top player. He's always on his A game. But this time, he just wasn't there. It just wasn't like him to do what he did. So, yeah, basically, it's because Mwepu just wasn't on his A-game. I've watched him play for Leifering, I've watched him play for Salzburg, and both 
all times I've watched him play, he's been very good. But in this past game, I give him a 4 out of 10. He was poor for me. And by his standard, he was the poorest player on the pitch for me. Not that he was the worst player on the pitch, but because of how good I know he is, how good I know he can play. He was the poorest player on the pitch. I feel as though Mwepu, on a good day, can drag your team to victory all by himself. He's a very good player. He gives the other players a lot of morale, a lot of courage. And when he's on the bench, it just breaks my heart. And so to see him play and perform terribly literally just broke my heart. I would say the fourth one is because Sven took a bit of time to make the second substitution. When he did make the first one, he brought on Patson Daka for Lubambo Msonda. But I'm not saying that was a bad substitution. I feel as though it was okay. But playing Patson Daka out wide was really not a very good idea because he was pretty much just ineffective on the wing. So why bring him on and put him in an ineffective position? The other thing is he could have brought on Rainford Calaba much, much earlier because when he did come on, we saw him get on the ball, spread the ball very well, have a few good passes. I feel as though if he came on earlier, maybe it would have been a different story. But that's just football. You win some, you lose some. And these are the four reasons I think Zambia lost the game. If you like content to do with Zambia, then subscribe to this channel because I'll be uploading at least twice a week.